have you got for me? What's the news? Uh, three masked men walked into Leesky's bar, opened fire, and the barmaid got injured. I don't like it. I don't like that it's three men. Make it less men or you're fired. Uh, two men. Less men than that. Hurry up. Uh, one man. What do you look like? They had masks on. I don't like it. I don't like masks. Change or you're fired. Uh, hats. What kind of hats? Top hats. I like it. Now, where are we now? Back to the beginning. Uh, one man with a top hat on walked. <laughs> I don't like walking. I don't like walk. Change it. Yeah, yeah. He rolled. He rolled. Now we're selling papers. He rolled any Leesky's bar. Not Leesky's bar. I hate that. Make something else. It don't make me fire you, son. He rolled any my granny's veranda. <laughs> open fire. I hate him opening fire. I hate that. Make him open something else. His legs. Oh, no, no, no. Crisps. He opened crisps. I like it. Now we're we? back to the beginning. The one man with a bowler hat on. A top hat. The one man with a top hat on rolled into my granny's veranda, opened crisps. Right. And the barmaid got injured. No, the barmaid. <laughs> I'm going to make it something else. I'm firing you here. The, the wife. The, the, the farmer's wife. The farmer's wife got not injured. Something else. We're selling papers. Spank. Spank. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The whole story now. Back to the beginning. Well, one man rolled. A man with a top hat on. Where's your journalistic integrity here? <laughs> with one man with a top hat on rolled into my granny's veranda, Om crisps, and the farmer's wife gets spanked. I like it. Now, what's the headline? We're selling papers here, remember? Move! Fern Cotton's face was under my bum. I love it! Print it! <laughs> <laughs> Start it in that mess wee bird called Tracy. Got her name tattooed on my back. He's not a scrapped. Soon as the tattoo's done, I go to her up a spout and I had to dump her. No bother. Just change the tattoo to the name of my favourite film. <laughs> but then Tracy had the way and it turned out not to be mine at all. So, just made one more wee adjustment. And now after me and Tracy's engagement do, I've had to change it one last time. <laughs> I'm sick of it, so I am. Here, what's wrong with you? I'm just sick of taking my family to places that don't have everything. Well, you better get yourself to Burniston. Burniston's got it all. Shops, roads, benches. Boy boxes, <laughs> spell grun. They've even got car parks in there. They will have in January. Planning permission's <laughs> just been granted for a car park. Here. Do you like stairs? They're my favourite. Burniston's got indoor and outdoor stairs. <laughs> and for the drivers, we've got the sixth best sequence in a temporary traffic lights in the UK. Burniston's full of family fun as well. Why not take a shot on a bus? <clears throat> or go straight to the top of the Burniston High Flats inside a working lift. And is there even more things to do than that? Aye. Catch her with a hash up the top of the bus. <laughs> Peer it through your curtains as you hear working class voices going past your BMW. Sprint with your baby's pram under a bridge of shiting pigeons. <laughs> this sounds fantastic. Can I go and hold you with you, Tom? No, after last time, Dan, my wife thinks you're a prick. <laughs> hey, I was sleepwalking. <laughs> this advert was brought to you by the Burniston Tourist Board. Burniston, it's better than people are making it out to be. <laughs> My name's Jackie McLeod. I'm a lead singer of Burniston's new girl group. I'm here to meet a songwriter, my brother met in a football supporters bus. I'm hoping he's maybe going to write a wee hit for us. Sorry, my tuner's broke. I had to tune us half my other guitar. And how do you know your other guitar's in tune? I don't. There's no strings on it. <laughs> well, you're a singer. Give me an E. Yeah, let's try to get a lunchtime first before starting on the drugs, eh? Have you written anything I might have heard it? Hunters? Do you know that when we hate our broth? No. How's it go? We hate our broth and we hate our broth. We hate our broth and we hate our broth. We hate our broth and we hate Excuse our... Excuse me? That sounds like a football song. That is a football song. <laughs> football songs are my opus moderandi. When my brother says you wrote a song for Harry Connick Jr. No. I wrote a song for Harry that plays with Cumnock Juniors. <laughs> Listen, see my girl band, right? We've got attitude. I'm sorry, pal, but we're sexy. Hey, we're the wee dolls that every guy wants a shot on. What he's called? The Snide Rides. We're totally cutting edge. That's why we need something kind of street. Street? Aye. What street? Just street, not a street. What, is it a main road or...? Excuse me, it's not an actual street. So what, you mean like a cul-de-sac then? I just forget I even said street, eh? Have you written us something or no? Aye. I have. Well, go then. 
Phoebe and Caress. Gonna get a boyfriend, well, gonna get a boyfriend. <laughs> you really must believe us. It's magic. Well, gonna win the league. <laughs> well, what, Vipo? Excuse me? We're looking for songs about being sexy, about nipping your ma's man, about having a clean thong, about having a boyfriend that doesn't turn up for his assault trial wearing trainers with his suit. Aspirational lifestyle songs, no stupid football. Right, right, we'll try this one then, Steve. We'll play it then. Right, right, here we go. <laughs> Girls, we an attitude. We've got fire in our eyes. That's me, I like it. You fat bastard, you fat bastard, you ate all the pie. Excuse me, I didn't break 20 big razors in a garden strimmer, getting myself a Brazilian just to sing songs to fat guys. <laughs> I'm an experienced songwriter, hen. You're new to showbiz. Showbiz? Excuse me? A room full of old pizza boxes and a big pile of crispy hankies? I mean, what is that anyway? Mount Chugmore? You need to be on a pill just to breathe in here. And for God's sake, you could have turned your porno after me coming up and no just pause it. <laughs> Look, my brother said that you can write songs for hot young lasses like myself. I should be your muse. I mean, look at me. I should be your inspiration here. Aye, aye, I've got it. I've got it now, right? Aye, here we go. Can we go? Snide, ride, superstar. That's it. I walk like a woman and I wear a bra. The bra's too big, I wear a wig, and that's why they call me a transsexual pig. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god. Right then, Christian, what can you tell us about your latest blockbuster? Well, it's called Aggressive Elephant. It's a fantastic... Right, just hold on, hold on there. Uh, this is for a Scottish audience, right? Uh, we were the advice. Don't go bumming yourself up. We'll decide if your film's fantastic or not, right? <laughs> on you go. Well, it's, uh, it's an exciting roller coaster ride. No. No, 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 no. See, in Scotland, right, we, we can't be annoyed with that kind of talk. <laughs> Roller coasters are for Blackpool. Right? Rides are lassies with ankle boots on, right? Next. Well, I'm trying to tell you about my movie. Oh, my movie. Uh, me, 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 me. We all know it's your movie, pal. Right? We all know that many of us are big show actors. Right? The only method we practice, mate, is a method for doing your lecky by sticking a wire in the mirror. Right? Can look at you. You got your face all that stupid poster and all. I don't make the billboards. Aye. Well, see any normal guy, he'd be like, get my face off that stupid poster, staring at an elephant. That's an embarrassment. I mean, what up to your Scottish accent, eh? Are you little Lulu with boys? I left Scotland when I was two years old. Aye, cos we weren't me good enough for you. Do you mind Sheena Easton? Yeah. Have you ever slept with a rock star? No. Well, she shagged Prince, so she's got more to boast about than you have. And when she started her pish, we flung gingy balls at her. And don't you forget it. Look. I don't understand. Oh, it does not understand the accent. Here it is. I knew it was coming. Well, have a look at this. Final spot of advice for you, mate. Huh? Just gaze upon that. That's what a Scottish guy's belly should look like. Right? <laughs> That's the real thing right there. Unbelievable. Big headed bastard. <laughs> Still some hard left if you want it. Eh, hey, no, no, I'm off it. He's on a diet. No, I'm not. What guy goes on a diet? Try to go here to David Furnish in my shift ends. Well, you have lost weight lately, but... Nah, nah, it's an optical illusion. Oh, help, I've lost weight. Oh, so that's my big fat arse panic over a fun it again. Are you on a diet because you got stuck in that door last month? <laughs> well, it wasn't a door, right? It was a serving hatch. Who has a serving hatch in a Burniston council flat? Anyway, is that what you get when you sign on now? 80 quid a fortnight in a butler? What were you doing crawling through a serving hatch anyway? Trying to get to the fridge. The hallway <laughs> was full of flames, is why. To save lives, is why. I saw him looking in the fridge. Aye, looking to see if there might have been people trapped in it. Where would you hide in a burning hothouse? In the oven? <laughs> nah, I haven't lost a bit of weight, actually. 
I put on the missus' new fitness DVD one night. Can I get in yet? Aye. Well, into it, I'll bet. I know it's your right arm's far skinnier than your left. I know. I was doing the moves. I was kind of up my street. Started doing it regular and the weights just fell off me. Hold on. My missus just gave your missus a fitness DVD. I got it for her birthday and she bounced it off my nut. I'm sh sure it's not the same one. It's a pole dancing DVD. <laughs> Have you been pole dancing? Why oh, don't be ridiculous. Uh, I said it was right up his street and we're always on poles. Yeah. See if I give you this and stick it down your wise where you show some of your moves for us. It's not pole dancing DVD, all right? What is it then? It's a, a thing made up. The, the one with a bird in it. What bird? The skinny bird that used to be fat. And what she look like? She looks fat. She looks great, actually. So much better. It's a pole dancing DVD. Very cool bloody dance, actually. <laughs> Listen, I don't care. I'm proud of it. No, but I'll just one up the pole and I'll show you my moves. Uh, you're not gyrating now the pole we need to slide up and down. <laughs> no, that's not happening. That's, that's just rang. Oh, it's rang, is it? Aye. Here, Murphy, stick that to anyone. I need some music to move to. Yeah, here So so that's aye, so that's pretty much how you would uh, lift an old woman out uh, on the new chair. <laughs> Right, just keep that in mind, right? Because it's a lot of safety, BBC brings you a new kind of police officer. Shut your mouth. No, you shut your mouth. I would never take a lend of someone like that. Wait a minute. What are you both talking in that mad Scottish actor's voice for? Why do you not just talk like a real guy? Lendo. Huh? Who talks like that in real life? It's Lenny, as in, she's a linear truncheon, eh? <laughs> You're hurting my arms. <laughs> See, even though I'm half a telly, I know. I just talk like a real guy off the streets. And I don't care. I hit out with words like trousers and toys. That's me, but I'm a real guy. <laughs> You've been doing the tune, drinking. You're out on your arse. See, there it is again. <laughs> you know the only people I know that talk like you, Chief Inspector? Shitty Scottish actors. I mean, how can you just talk like me? Like a real guy? Like your dad, your uncle or whatever, just a real guy, just pure like that, blah, blah, blah. Just pure talking like no punctuation or nothing, just being like a real guy? Get out. Oh, enunciating your T's, I know, I. That in case there's any English watching. Maybe I better join you, you total twat! <laughs> Real guy. What kind of voice was that now? Real guy. Sabot. <laughs> See the next time you're watching Grease. Grease. Aye. And you get to the bit at the end when you and Olivia Newton John turns up in all the sexy gear. Aye. I don't want you to imagine me wearing that sexy gear. <laughs> I don't want you to imagine me with my hair all up and permed, the figure-hugging black trousers, the high heel shoes and the painted toenails. I don't want you to imagine me like that and like the thought of it. Fair enough, mate. I don't want you to do that. I can't argue with that, mate. You would do something for me, though. What's up, bud? See you the next time we're in the bookies. Aye. And I've got my glasses on to check the form. Aye. I don't want you to look at me and imagine walking up to me while romantic music swells in the background. Hey, border, but... I don't want you to imagine taking my glasses off slowly and when you do that, my long blonde hair just comes piling down <laughs> and suddenly I'm beautiful, just like my mommy promised I'd be. <laughs> I don't want you to imagine taking that bookie pen from between my lips and leaning forward and kissing me softly while my perfect skin glows and that summery haze drifting in a bookie's windy. You don't need to worry about that, bud. See the next time you watch a Bugs Bunny cartoon? Aye. And Bugs Bunny tricks Elmer Fudd because he'd known he's a woman. Fudd? Aye. I don't want you to think that if I was ever hunting you in the forest, you'd be able to pull that on me, right? Right, man. 
I don't want you to put on a sexually provocative dress, a long blonde wig and a gorgeous shade of red lipstick, and then kissing me and making me fall in love with you before revealing your true identity, but then imagining that it didn't matter that you weren't a real woman because I'd loved you all along anyway. <laughs> I don't want you to do that. I'll try not to think that, mate. Right, bud. I'll try not to think that just for you. That you've got to promise me something, but... What's that, bud? See you next time. You're watching Rocky 3. Rocky, aye. And you're jumping up and down on your couch, screaming with excitement at that big fight at the end. Aye. You've got to promise me that when that film finishes, you don't wish that you were Rocky. You've got to promise me that when that guy puts his microphone right in your face, you don't picture yourself shouting, John, my best mate, I done it. And you don't picture me coming running down to the ring with my lipstick on <laughs> and handbag in heels. And I'm greeting. And you just gather me up in your big, strong arms. And you just cuddle me. I won't ever do that, but You go and promise me, but I promise I won't ever do that for you, but just for you. <laughs> Okay, now on Berniston Radio, it's time to talk the arts. Today we are asking this. If Shakespeare were alive today, would he be as successful? Let's go to Dan in Berniston. What do you think, Dan? What are you talking about, mate? <laughs> if Shakespeare were alive today, he'd be 400 years old. Uh, no, no, I, I don't mean if he was still alive, Dan. I mean if he'd been born in our time. Oh, so Shakespeare came back to life. Well, it crawled to his grave like a zombie. No, no, not came back to life, Dan. Born in these days. Here, hold on a minute. This has blown my mind a bit here. <laughs> You've seen Shakespeare's getting born again. So he's been born twice? No, this is the first time he's been born, Dan. Oh, man, this is getting wild. So his mother and father would have to be born again. That was Dan. Let's move up the mental competence scale now with Professor James Campbell of Berniston University. James, if Shakespeare's works were never written and he wrote them today, would they be as successful? As successful as what? As successful as the works of Shakespeare have come to be. You just told that poor man, Dan, that Shakespeare was never born back then, so all those wonderful plays don't exist. What, pray tell, are you comparing his new plays to? As successful as what? As successful as the, 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 the success that marked the release of the original plays. There are no original plays, sir. Shakespeare wasn't born, says you, says the radio DJ. You are disgusting. Unbelievable. Let's just get this straight. I am not claiming that Shakespeare didn't exist. OK. Now, Benny. Berniston. Sam, see, since I heard this news that Shakespeare didn't exist, I am freaking out something awful here, Sam. I mean, I'm holding in my horn my late father's copy of Shakespeare's sister's mercurial second album, Hormonally Yours. Now, you tell me this is a figment of my imagination? No! No! We're just imagining what it would be like if Shakespeare was alive today. Terrifying! It would be terrifying, cos there's all these things named after a guy that didn't exist until today. So that would be maybe Shakespeare being born would be like... The arrival of some kind of antichrist whose birth was foretold. I mean, Sam, I was smoking a Hamlet cigar this morning. I was smoking something that shouldn't exist. That's, that's it. I'm burning my house down. Uh, whoa, 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 Benny, 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 just look. Just calm down. Listen to me. No, you listen to me. When Marty McFly went back in time and got with his own mother, his horn disappeared. What's going to happen when that wee baby smokes a Hamlet cigar? His lips will vanish. Look, I think everybody just needs to calm down. If that wee baby watches Baz Luhrmann's audacious second feature, Romeo and Juliet, his head will turn into a gas. Then he'll not be able to think any place. And that'll mean Shakespeare's works won't even exist in the future, creating this time paradox, and we'll all get sucked into a time hole. Right, Sam, must be a wait, you know. <laughs> Jane, Berniston. Well, thankfully, Sam, some of your listeners do have half a brain in their heads. <laughs> I think the question really comes down to whether you feel that Shakespeare's work... Oh, I'm sorry, Jane, I'm going to have to cut you off there. I'm afraid that's us filled our arts quota for the week. Playing us out now, it's Dire Straits with Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Buddy! 
Dear Fat Bastards, Rico and Sonny here with our new DVD and how you can live a Hollywood lifestyle like we do. That's right, you fat dicks. We are going to self help you, to self help yourself. Check your bodies on us, man. We used to just live up with flats with our granny, while the rest of you three guns. No look at Check your bodies on us, man. Rico, kick my stunning up. I'm on it, man. Oh, never <laughs> even felt it, man. Cause I've got big mad muscly feet. No, the Rico and Sunny lifestyle is all about one thing. The female of the species. The daughters of Eve. Or as we like to call them, Slitches. <laughs> Slitches love guys with hot, tight bodies like other ones. They love her. They love her. They love her, you fat daddy. They love her, you muppet. There's no excuse. You don't need to go to Gold's Gym to have big mad bodies like ours. You can work on your physique during everyday activities. Like, go out for your granny's messages. <laughs> Carrying a poly bag like that is well good for your glutes, man. Rico, these steak pies don't even know what a glute is. Well, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> you do a shite out of it. <laughs> now, You've bagged a belter and you've sneaked her in past your granny. What can your DVD tell you about that awkward morning after? If a slitch has done you the honour of letting you gubber in the glute all night, you've <laughs> got to be a conscientious host in the morning. Be sure to leave a big pile of your dirty pants lying at the side of the bed so she's got a nice, soft landing when you fall her arse right out of the sack. <laughs> and why not leave a Rico and Sonny love tree at the foot of the bed containing all the shite a slitch with ever need in the morning, such as a pair of clean drawers. The morning after, pal. <laughs> a contract waving their image rights so you can sell that video you made straight to your internet pornographers. A dozen eggs and a note on how you like them. And a bus timetable so they can sling a hook. And who you can sling your hook and get out to buy Rico and Sonny's Chicken I can use your yeah. mad fat tassels, you. <laughs> Only 15. Oh, you just hurry up and get down that off license for me. Granny, well, don't do it! Don't hurt his granny! His granny was him! What did I tell you about Clayton? What did I tell oh, you? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I'm staying out of jail this time. I mean it. See a suit I'm wearing? This is the first suit I've ever worn, no? This has been something, my suit. This is the suit I'll be wearing a job and I'm using that, no? What's that saying, they say? The clothes make it for my and I. Well, this suit is going to be the making of me. I'm sick of worrying my family. All I've ever done is give my ma a worry. But see, for I stay on, right? I'm going to make my mammy proud. Hang on, I'll probably be the police. <laughs> Hello, Joe. We got a guy doing the station, he's underpants saying you stole his suit. Aye, I've got it on. Am I going to jail? Aye, right. <laughs> You better let my moral. <laughs> so what can I do for you, wee boy? Eh, uh, can I have an arrow, please? Hey, what do you want an arrow for? I hope you're not wanting my arrow, because it's all my chocolate anyway. Walter, I'm trying to serve the wee boy. No, you're not serving him, because the last time you talked to that boy, you gave him my chocolate anyway. Walter, if you're going to come out in the van, you need to learn how things work. Oh, well, fine. Well, I'll just watch you then, anyway. I could just watch. Don't even talk. I just said I'd just watch you anyway, anyway. Right, I'm sorry about my brother. What did you say you wanted again? Can I have an arrow, please? No, you're not having an arrow. An arrow's my chocolate anyway. You just said you wouldn't speak. I'm not speaking, but it's all my chocolate and you're giving it to the boy. Look, Walter, we need to sell chocolate so we have money so we can have a house. It will let me serve the boy. You? And what if he asks for an arrow? <sighs> if I'm the boss, he can have one anyway. Right, fine. On you go. <coughs> What do you want, stupid, smelly, ugly boy? You can only have rubbish, plain crisps of disgusting licorice. Walter, be nice. Tell the boy he can have an arrow if he wants. OK! You can have an arrow if you want, anyway. Now, what do you want? An arrow? No! <laughs> what do you keep saying arrow for? An arrow's my chocolate, anyway! Walter, that's you. 
That's what you're costing us business here. Look here. There's your accordion. Why don't you go and play your favourite song? Well, I don't know how to play the accordion, but I'll go and play it anyway. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. Who did you say you wanted? Can I have an arrow? Shh. Just spell it out. Can I have an A-E-R-O, please? <laughs> That's 45 pence for an A-E-R-O. Hey! I know what A-E-R-E-R-O spells. <laughs> it spells my chocolate anyway. That boy's away and he's got my arrow, that boy! <laughs> I've got other customers here. How about I say take one of your things off, eh? Like your trousers? How about I take your stupid trousers off, eh? What? <laughs> Here, take your stupid panties off again as well, and I'll wear them on my head. <laughs> look, look. You can take my beret and my trousers, but leave my panties on, please. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it. I asked you to leave me with my panties on. You're on your own. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Can I help you? Can I get a bottle of lime made? Certainly. Excuse me, that's my lime <laughs> <laughs> made. I had a moment with my neighbour's wife. We held each other for a moment. What sort of penance am I looking at? Well, for a sin of that nature, you'd be looking at a hundred Hail <laughs> Marys and a hundred Our Fathers. Uh, now, what you're thinking about Father Lou's offer, let me just make you aware of what we could do for you over at St Stephen's. <laughs> for kissing and holding your neighbour's wife, we can offer you a penance of a hundred Hail Marys, but only 80 of our fathers and a wee cup of tea in the church hall thrown in afterwards for absolutely free. As St John's, that cup of tea goes without saying, along with some of Mrs Murphy's famous homemade tablet. Now, you've already held your neighbour's wife at St John's. hundred Hail Marys, 80 our fathers, We'll even let you have a wee feel of our bum. <laughs> Cup of tea, homemade sablet, bottle of malt whiskey, and over at St Stephen's, we know that a wee feel of a bum just isn't enough for today's man. That's why we let you feel a bum, feel our other bum, and let her feel you where you don't have another bum. <laughs> All for a knockdown ten, Hail Marys. OK, let me paint you a picture of this St Jones I'm talking about here. You get tea. Tablet, whiskey, a 10% cut of the collection plate. <laughs> Holding your neighbour's wife, fine by us. Feeling bums, fantastic. But at St John's, you're going to be pumping that married woman left, right and centre. <laughs> and not just her, we'll let you pump every single man, woman and beastie in the parish. And the parents, not two Hail Marys, not one Hail Mary. I've got to be out of my mind. No Hail Marys, no <laughs> other fathers. You never have to go to chapel again. And when you die, we'll make you a saint. <laughs> Take it. I'll get you signed up. Who's got a sin? Anybody got a sin? Anybody out there with a sin? <laughs>